Welcome to Med Madness, the podcast where we delve into essential medical topics for students and professionals alike. Today's episode focuses on peripheral artery disease, or PAD. Understanding PAD is crucial for medical students as it is a common but serious circulatory condition that can lead to significant morbidity if left untreated. In this episode, we'll cover the risk factors, diagnosis and management strategies for PAD to help you effectively recognise and treat this condition. Peripheral artery disease is a condition characterised by the narrowing of peripheral arteries due to atherosclerosis, which leads to reduced blood flow to the limbs. This often results in pain and discomfort, particularly in the legs. Risk factors for PAD include diabetes mellitus, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, advanced age and smoking, which is the strongest risk factor. Next, let's discuss the pathophysiology of PAD. PAD occurs when atherosclerotic plaques build up in the large arteries, such as the abdominal aorta, iliac, femoral and popliteal arteries. This reduces blood flow to the extremities leading to ischemia and symptoms like intermittent claudication. PAD shares a similar pathophysiology with coronary artery disease, or CAD, making it a CAD risk equivalent. Moving on to symptoms and clinical presentation. Patients with PAD often present with the following symptoms. Intermittent claudication, which is pain in the legs that occurs with exertion and is relieved by rest. Diminished pulses, which are reduced or absent pulses in the affected limbs. And a low ankle brachial index, or ABI. An ABI of 0.9 or less is diagnostic of PAD. Next, let's talk about the diagnosis of PAD. The diagnosis involves several methods and tools, including the ankle brachial index, or ABI, which is a simple non-invasive test comparing the blood pressure in the ankle to the blood pressure in the arm. An ABI of 0.9 or less is diagnostic of PAD. Other diagnostic methods include Doppler ultrasound to evaluate blood flow and detect blockages, and angiography for detailed imaging of the arteries. Now let's discuss the management and treatment of PAD. Treatment for PAD involves a combination of medical, surgical and lifestyle interventions. First, risk factor management is crucial. This includes smoking cessation, counselling and support to quit smoking, blood pressure and diabetes control, and antiplatelet and statin therapy. Low-dose aspirin is used to reduce thrombotic events, and high-intensity statins such as atorvastatin and rosuvastatin are used to lower cholesterol and stabilise plaques. Additionally, supervised exercise therapy is highly recommended. This involves a regular exercise programme for at least 12 weeks, with 30 to 45 minutes of exercise three times a week. Supervised programmes are preferred due to their proven benefits in reducing symptoms and improving walking distance. Next, pharmacologic therapy includes medications such as celostazole, which is preferred over pentoxifiline for symptomatic relief. For persistent symptoms, revascularization may be considered. This can involve angioplasty with or without stent placement, which is a minimally invasive procedure to widen narrowed arteries, or bypass grafting, which uses autogenous or synthetic grafts to bypass the blocked arteries. Now, let's look at a brief case study to illustrate a real-world example of PAD. A 65-year-old man with a history of smoking and hypertension presents with pain in his legs while walking, which is relieved by rest. His ABI is 0.65, indicating PAD. Based on his symptoms and ABI, he is diagnosed with PAD. He is enrolled in a supervised exercise program started on celostazole and advised on smoking cessation. His blood pressure and diabetes are managed with appropriate medications and he is prescribed a high-intensity statin and low-dose aspirin. In conclusion, managing peripheral artery disease involves a comprehensive approach including lifestyle modifications, supervised exercise therapy, pharmacologic treatments and possibly revascularization for persistent symptoms. Recognising PAD as an ASCVD equivalent highlights the importance of aggressive risk factor management to reduce cardiovascular events. Early diagnosis and management are crucial in improving patient outcomes. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Med Madness. We hope you found this discussion informative. Don't forget to engage with our pre- and post-podcast quizzes to test your understanding. Stay tuned for more insightful discussions in our next episode.